For most commercial buildings, exterior walls fall into these categories. Concrete block, concrete tilt-up, metal building, curtain wall, and masonry facade. Rainwater management is one part understanding moisture flow, one part common sense, and one part proper use of materials. Use water resistive barriers, WRB, as drainage planes behind exterior claddings, and provide a drainage space between claddings and WRBs. Weep holes are required so water will drain away from the wall system. Ventilated air spaces are added protection and increase the drying potential of the wall assembly. Exterior air and wind barriers not only slow air movement through the assembly, but they also reduce the impact of wind-driven rain. Some WRBs can be installed to perform as air barriers as well. Interior air barriers can also be utilized to reduce condensation in closed cavities. We'll look at how climate influences the selection and placement of vapor retarders. First, cold climates. Vapor retarders should be placed at the interior of the building envelope. It's best to avoid low permeance vapor retarders, such as polyethylene film or aluminum foil, in these circumstances. In climates with high summertime moisture loads, in building envelopes with moisture storage claddings, such as concrete or brick, and in building envelopes with low permeability exterior sheathings, such as extruded polystyrene. Now, in mixed humid climates, you first want to determine whether the climate is heating or cooling dominated. If you're in a heating dominated climate, you should locate the vapor retarder at the interior. But if you're in a cooling dominated climate, the opposite is true. You'd locate the vapor retarder at the exterior of the building envelope. Best choices here are either a smart vapor retarder or a semi permeable vapor retarder like asphalt coated craft paper usually attached to faced fiberglass bats, or another choice might be vapor-retarding paint. And in this mixed humid climate, you should avoid using low permeance polyfilm or aluminum foil. In a mixed dry climate, most of the time a vapor retarder is not required because rainfall is light and humidity tends to be low, but check the local code. It may require the vapor retarder at the interior. Now in a hot humid climate, the recommendation is to place the vapor retarder at the exterior outside of the cavity insulation. And finally, in a hot dry climate, a vapor retarder is not recommended. Solar heat drives moisture into building materials, and that's especially true in the case of moisture storage claddings, which can absorb and retain large amounts of moisture. The sun comes out, creates a high vapor pressure at the outside, and this drives the stored moisture inward into building assemblies. Since it's nearly impossible to prevent moisture from entering 100% of the time, using a smart vapor retarder permits water to escape from building assemblies as water vapor, which permits the assemblies to dry to the inside. The most common commercial wall construction is the steel stud cavity assembly. This is our considered recommendation for long life and optimum performance. We'll build that wall for you right here. First, Always use a water-resistive barrier. It's the first line of defense against rainwater intrusion. Water will enter somewhere, somehow, so use a ventilation and drainage space between the masonry facade and the WRB. You want to maximize condensation control several ways. First, by using insulating sheathings. Use exterior air wind barriers, because air can transport quite a bit of moisture into assemblies if it's not blocked. Use interior air barriers to help control wintertime moisture from migrating and condensing on cold surfaces. And use a smart vapor retarder to not only control the wintertime moisture, but also allow assemblies to breathe during other seasons.